Hi there, beautiful people. Welcome back to Stories Done Under. Stella here and Fran. We are both financial professionals and we hope to bring to you uh, things to do with finances, life, corporate world, lifestyle, and to make knowledge accessible to everybody. So hopefully you all sit down and enjoy today's topic as you've seen from the thumbnail. However, before we start, I would like to say thank you for all the 6,000 of you who are subscribed and we really, really appreciate. For a young channel like us, sometimes it's hard to fathom 6,000 people who are subscribed to our wow. channel. So thank you and if you haven't subscribed, please do it now before we get started. And yeah, thank you. Thank you so, so much. So today, Fran, we're covering a very interesting topic mm. and how to handle conflict. Even thinking about the topic itself makes me a bit nervous. I know. It is really, really, really hard. But recently I came across a, a quote by Abraham Hinks and he talks about the greatest gift you can ever give another person is your own happiness. And this is how I relate this to conflict is that sometimes when we have a conflict, within ourselves, within our family, mm -hmm. and you don't address what is really pastoring you or what mm -hmm. is uh, has angered you, and then you let it go, and then the second pass the second time this person again steps on your feet or annoys you again, you let it go. And then when we decide to address it, it's like we start spitting poison. You know what of I course. mean? <laughs> so here we want to just give you a few tips from our own experiences and we're gonna share our own experiences on how we've actually managed to uh, handle conflict and for me i will be the first to admit for me it's still a work in progress so i'm expect i'm gonna learn from you fran today and i want us to start on a very different note today and what i want to ask you is that have you had any conflict in the recent past that you would share and how you went about it and how you handle the conflict Yes, Stella. In my previous role as a team leader, mm -hmm. I had a situation that I would classify as a conflict mm -hmm. or rather a difficult conversation. And there was a lot involved mm -hmm. to be able to handle it as professional as I could and to be able to get the best outcome out of it. Mm -hmm. So as a team leader, we had this member who had relocated from, uh, I wouldn't say relocated, but moved from a different branch to our branch. Mm -hmm. She'd been with the company for a while and uh, obviously, yes, she knew the system, she knew the processes, but the fact that she moved to our team meant that she had to do the way, uh, things the leaders. way we did. Mm -hmm. She had to work the way our team worked mm -hmm. and she was just finding it um, difficult to adjust mm -hmm. and even to interact with members and there were complaints here and there about her behavior as well as her work ethics. So mm. I thought about it. It was difficult. Uh, the fact that she was new to the team and the fact that I'd not been up in a position where I had to face someone with a difficult conversation because all that was ringing in my mind was that how is it going to end? What if it goes the other way. Mm. What if she gets so rude? What if it creates drama? But like everyone else, we don't like to, to have confrontation at work. Yeah. We don't like to have drama at work. We'd rather just bury our head in the sand and be the likable people, the yeah. peaceful people around. Yeah. But in this case, I wasn't going to let it go because I had given the person enough time yeah. to adjust, yeah. enough time to change yeah. and to do the right thing. I think so, also from the viewpoint that you are the team leader. Yes. So everybody was looking at you to be the solution to the problem. So of I course. Think that adds another dynamic altogether, don't you think? Yes. Yeah. So people kept kept coming to me. Mm -hmm. People kept ask, telling me about the person. So I had to first collect information. Mm -hmm. When you're handling a conflict or a difficult conversation, please be humbled with facts. How get the seats. facts right because <laughs> you don't want to just talk without evidence you yeah. don't want to just talk blankly because you're looking you're looking at getting an outcome mm -hmm. you're looking at addressing a situation mm -hmm. and the best way to do this is to be armed with information mm -hmm. so i kept i took time to collect information as they say the first thing you need to do is to prepare and by preparation meant i need to i needed to choose my words mm -hmm. i had to prepare both mentally and 
physically because she was a strong person who could I was expecting strong anything personality, a, yeah. a strong personality yeah I, think I was expecting the anything most intimidating ones you know of when course. people are very quick with their words and yeah. you know you can end up being a and I get she was not the type of person who would back down yeah exactly despite the yeah. fact that you are her manager she would not she yeah. would just tell you as it is so anyway i put everything together i set up a day mm. i had to obviously send her everything on email mm. as per the meeting day the meeting date the time and the venue mm. but in saying that i had to be very general not to be specific as to the reason for the meeting because i didn't um really want to scare the person mm. neither did i want to show her that there's an issue yeah yeah so i just wanted to keep it general but on the other hand i had my facts collected okay. so i set up the day mm. set up the venue she accepted the invite came on the day i made it i made sure it was a monday where you all fresh <laughs> you've thought about it the whole weekend yeah you you know you're ready for the day because yeah. i had to even practice mm. what i needed to say mm. and also think of how to answer the tough questions that i could receive from the person mm. anyway um she got in and i started by being very very clear mm as to the reason of course we had to say hello how the weekend was mm. but i didn't want to beat about the bush mm. i didn't want to go round and round i wanted to be very specific very clear as to the reason why i had invited them for the meeting mm. and i started by telling them i noticed that in the past few weeks you're not interacting very well with the team mm. you're not doing the right thing mm. you're spending too much time out of work and a number of people have complained about your attitude mm. and then I push the button back to her and ask what do you think is there anything you need to say about this because mm. normally the best thing when you're handling a difficult situation is to give the other person party the opportunity the opportunity to say mm. something because there could be a reason why people are doing what they're doing mm. so I obviously did that I gave them time to speak to tell me what they thought and yes i got very difficult questions from the person difficult uh different sort of attitude which i had to handle and in saying that they so are that thing in the sense that were they like very defensive and not hearing it and not admitting that there was any issue or how in terms of difficulty what do you mean yes at first they were very defensive oh, okay they were mm. like where are you getting this from mm. and i I said I have observed mm. and I have noted the date mm. and um I've been doing this over a period of time mm -hmm. and people in the team have also mentioned the same thing mm. but still mm. they were still uh, they were still very defiant or very defensive mm. but I did a lot of listening mm. and validation but then I had to stick to the outcome of the conversation yeah. I had to talk about the company the organization rules mm. regulation policies and procedures so that we stick to the outcome mm. of the meeting mm -hmm. so i kept it really brief I, i restated the outcome and then finally we had to brainstorm mm. i told her look i know that i've called you here it's not just to i'm not here to accuse you of anything i just want to find out the best way in which we can work together and work well as a team is there anything i can do as a team leader to help you work better with other colleagues or to help you you know um work i mean be professional as you can and then oh, that's really it good. turned out into a discussion where we were sort of brainstorming thinking of things we could do right thinking of uh, how also mentioning things she could change on her end oh, and that's very, very, when we very left it was good. quite fruitful and i think we left at a point where we could easily shake hands and yeah. say yes it, it was, was a win win on my oh, end all right yes. so i think from that i think you, that that's a really good strategy to go about it to have yeah. i think to have receipts to have quote and quote receipts in terms of evidence in the yeah. past to collect like your what, information yeah. put everything together mm -hmm. don't just be theoretical don't just think when you're talking about things like that especially when it's a professional talk mm. always have your evidence mm. always put prepare well mm. i don't know how it would happen in a family setup but also in a family setup where when you're addressing a conflict or a, 
an issue you could even mention the dates mm. and exact happening mm. or even screenshots on of eh, whatsapp okay. conversations if you can because yeah. some people have a tendency of denying and denying and denying mm. you know yeah. and you also don't want to come across as accusing without yeah. you know facts yeah but yeah. i think for me i would actually just bring in bring out the receipts only if they get uh defensive only when yeah. they get very unagreeable then yeah. i will bring out the receipts so i think having the receipts is important but then i feel like if you start out with the receipts it can be a bit vindicative like yeah sort of oh why you you know it's like oh, on this and this day whatnot there's also, of yes. course, you said you choose your words very wisely and whatnot. Very, very yeah. wisely. Yeah. Go straight to the point and be very, you know, choose, be wise with your words. Yeah. Don't go, yes, you did this. Say, I feel like this has not been going well. Yeah. And this has resulted into this and that and that. Or this has made me feel this way. Yeah. So absolutely. in that way, the person takes the responsibility. On the other hand, they feel like you're not pointing a finger at them. Very, very well. Yeah. Oh, that's that's brilliant. I'm glad that that actually ended up pretty good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And w- what about you, Stella? I'm sure in this whole world you <laughs> might have encountered as something na- like that, not work related, but yeah. it could be anywhere. Yeah. As yeah. nice as I am. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> of course, we we all we all go through conflict. We yeah. all definitely go conflict. I think having shared from a professional perspective, thing maybe I can mm-hmm. touch on the personal perspective. Uh, to be quite honest, as I started by saying that I have been one that has always really avoided conflict. I avoid you don't the, like drama. I hate you dramas, don't like confrontation. I hate, I hate conflict. I hate you different. bury your head in the exactly, sand. Exactly. Absolutely. And a lot of people do, do yeah. that. You're not alone. Yeah. And yeah. I used to be for a long time. I think for me, I've actually come a long way because for a long time, if someone offended me and they kept on offending me, I just pulled away. And just uh, say, you know what? Yeah, it's fine. I'll I'll make other friends. But I think Mm -hmm. as you get older, you realize that you rarely meet very good people. And when you meet good people, they will have their own weaknesses as well. Of course, we are human. Yeah, we are all human and man is to err. So it's very important. I think for me, I realized that I, I must have those difficult conversations because I, you, I, what I realize is that when we have those um, sort of someone offends you, as we say it, and offends you again, then you start to resent them and you start to have contempt, which you don't want to get there, especially if someone is a good, that they have so much goodness that outweighs their weaknesses. It's so, true, because yeah. sometimes they might not even know that, know they're, that offending they're offending you. you. So if Absolutely. you don't tell them, they'll obviously not know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They'll keep doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And actually say, saying that I had, uh, not very recent, but I think this year, I've had to, I had to speak to a friend mm-hmm. and just tell them that something they were doing was really, really offending me. Mm-hmm. And I think for me, I had such good... Uh, sort of reception from their friend. Yeah. And I, I just started by saying uh, that, you know what, let's say my f- the friend name was Kara. I was like, Kara, you know, every time you make this comment or you say this and this about me, it really, really hurts my feelings. Mm. You know, I know you say it as a joke. I know you, I know you, you, you want to know, but it's not something that, I want to be reminded of, you know, yeah. you know, so I had to say that and their response is what really, really cemented the, our relationship. And you know what she said? It's like, I am so, so sorry that it made you feel the way that wow. it made you feel. Wow. And wow. for me, that was like, it's not that it, for her, it was a joke and she yeah. never meant it. And it was just teasing me. The fact that she acknowledged that how it made me feel, mm-hmm. she was sorry for how it made me feel. Yeah, I think that for me was just <gasps> mind blowing. It's like that's why I love <laughs> it. So that's glad why it we are ended friends. well. Yeah, you know. yeah. And it I think a- what I learned yeah. from that is to first of all to because also my approach being yes. very very gentle, saying you know what I love you so much, but when mm-hmm. you say these things, you know when you tease me about this particular area of my life, I. I actually, it really, really bothers me. It actually makes me feel bad. And yeah. just that approach, creating that environment whereby, you know what, 
I'm not gonna say, oh, you. I think you're very annoying. I don't. I feel like you like to pick on me. I feel like no, no. It's more like this is how it made me feel. And that's some a tip I think I watched somewhere on YouTube, and I just use the same approach. When you do this, this is how I feel. And I think especially with relatives, with parents, with people who you're really close to and you love them, you know, it's important to actually address it that way. You know, like for example, I, was, I, I think I was watching something and some lady was complaining online about the mother turning up at her house at any time without any notice. And she had to move so yeah. far from the mother so wow. that the mother is not able to visit. And I thought, wow, like... She should well, have addressed She should just it. have yeah. said to your mom that mom... Easier I, said than exactly. done. Exactly. <laughs> it's so easier said than done. And I know sometimes it's it's hard and it's difficult to, mm. to especially speak to people who are so close and to address yeah. and to give boundaries. Yeah. That can be very, very difficult. But cool. I think for me is choosing your words correctly, mm -hmm. finding the right environment, like yes. being able to like create, curate that environment. It's not just like any day. Trying to have the correct timing is mm -hmm. very, very important. In a time that some, your friend or your, your, your sibling is in a calm situation and they're in a position to listen yeah. and to accommodate that conversation as well as to be very gentle and kind and to actually say, you know, this and this doesn't make me happy and, you know, you know, just say it as it is, as opposed to just beating around the bush, as you were saying, yeah. is quite, quite important. So with that said, I think, what do you think created this? What, what, what attributed mostly to the success of the outcome that you got from the conflict that you had to resolve? Yeah, I think in my case, it was the preparation. Mm, yeah. I was really prepared both mentally and physically because mm. i knew it was not going to be an easy one yeah and uh, the fact that i was very open mm. and i was very clear mm. i was very clear as to the reason why i had called in um for the meeting mm. or the conversation and on the other hand i was able to listen mm. and that really really helped yeah yeah yeah, I think, yeah, absolutely. So what do you think, for example, for someone, what do you think can result to the opposite? Uh, what are the things that we need to avoid when dealing with conflict that could res could end up causing more da more damage than good? What are the no-nos? The no-nos, the, no -nos, the first thing yeah. is not being prepared, just meeting someone and starting to talk about a difficult conversation. Yeah. The first thing is that they are going to feel attacked. Yeah. You want to prepare in a way that the person doesn't feel attacked. Yeah. And if you're not prepared, obviously they're going to feel attacked. You're not going to come across as you have chosen your words. Mm. And the other thing that I think of is avoid being emotional. A lot mm. of people, mm. especially us women, the moment we start talking about a difficult conversation, ah. it's waterworks. Yeah. And how are you going to talk about a difficult conversation when, when you're, you're bawling, yeah. bawling your eyes out? Yeah. So yeah. work on your emotions. Do what you need to do prior to the conversation. Mm. Think of something positive. You can have your chamomile tea. You can listen, listen to some good music before mm. you um, get to that conversation. I think, yeah. I think for me, when, I, when my emotions sort of take place is when I have to talk to someone who's of a higher hierarchy. Yeah. For example, in the, time, in the team setup, if yeah. I have to speak to my manager yeah. about something they've done that doesn't sit well with me, yeah. that now becomes very, very difficult. Yeah. Because I think there's something about the hierarchy that just is so, so scary and whatnot and how you'll be perceived as well. Yeah. But and you realize, yeah. sir, you realize that when you're emotional, you're not able to, to get articulate out what yourself. you yeah, need to. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, but definitely with preparation. And what I've noticed is that every time, like for example, with a friend that I addressed the conflict with, we're like BFFs now. It actually yeah. cements that relationship. It and even does. in the work setup, in the times that I've had to tell maybe some my manager or whatnot, you know, you know, I think that you like to interrupt or you you how you I feel like you're not giving me the opportunity to actually, you know, do my work by yeah. always interfering or whatnot has actually cemented our work relationship. They've yeah. viewed me at a different light. They've it's had become so much more respectful. Yeah. So as much as it's worrisome, I think it's it's the hard job that we have to do. But always as daunting as it can be, it always results to better relationship, better 
communication and more respect really that we I agree with you it's just the perception that yeah. people think oh how is it gonna come out how about you think of it positively that it could end up very positive yeah. you could end up getting the results but most of the times when we think of such uh, conversations all that is in our mind is it could end you know it could yeah. go peer shape mm. the other person might take it wrong or the other person might not like me mm. so i think the other thing that we need to think of is changing your mindset mm -hmm. have an open mind before you have such kind of conversations yeah, yeah. thank you so much fran i think having shared those uh, we really definitely wish you all the best as you navigate the world it's not yeah. an easy place we are all different people yeah. and i hope you will gain some tips from that and please leave a comment tell us how you've been managing conflict and we always very excited to hear from all of you again don't forget to like to share and to subscribe and thank you so much for being here bye for now